What is up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, welcome to another opening move video. We're here today, the nation, the spotlight nation is going to be Albania. And uh, this is something I've really been looking forward to making this video on Albania. Uh, and I hope that uh, it benefits you guys. But I really quickly just want to talk about, I haven't been very active apart from my daily video uploads of my Let's Play, which is not my intention. And uh, this is directed towards those of you who actually follow my channel and not here just for this one video. I really qu quickly want to talk about, I uh, haven't been uploading actively uh, for basically two main reasons. Uh, anytime something happens, like in real life terms, I'm really good at working around it, uh, usually, and recording regardless. Uh, however, we have had basically, the landlord, I suppose, has been doing up their place, and uh, that includes like uh, a painter has been around, but they have like sanding machines and stuff. It's made my uh, opportunities to record pretty few and far between. Usually, I would just do something like that at night, but um, there's... Yeah, it's not really even your guys' business, but uh, this, somebody's basically split up and with their partner and they've been crashing at our place. So with that being said, it's been because I'd want to respect them and uh, not be up during the middle of the night uh, while they're trying to sleep. It's been uh, relatively impossible, that's how it's felt, to actually record videos. Um, so I apologize for that. And as far as my Total War thing that I was, I did actually record and I was uploading and I intended to upload. They made a, a new content patch essentially in preparation for the second iteration of that game, the Total War Hammer 2 or whatever it is. And uh, for that reason, I thought, screw it, it was a really bad time and I'd still like to do that, but it'll be at another date. With that being said, this is the opening move Albania. You can see here that I'm doing quite well. And uh, I'm going to change up the formula just a little bit here where I'm going to show you guys where I'm at right now, but I'm going to continue on. And uh, I usually have a hard time judging with these opening moves, guys, when I'm showing off the content. You know, sometimes it seems like, say you're playing as Byzantium and you just, boom, decisively take everything from the Ottomans. In some ways, if it's like 1450 and you're big and strong, that's more impressive than, you know, the end of the game. I find it um, a little bit difficult to actually... Um, judge when is the best time to show off the game but with that being said we have the Crimea as a subject who we actually fed just a little bit and I've taken uh, the province of the Crimea itself to own this actual uh, area you can see here that we have 38% uh, control over Constantinople uh, fairly in a predictable manner strong up in this region but we also have large influence over Greece and I have successfully blocked the Ottomans basically from expanding into Egypt feel really good about that and I decided to show you guys here because for the last like uh, 50 years or so this game has been pretty sketchy and by that I mean it could have gone downhill pretty quickly uh, but I finally have acquired king diplomacy here with Muscovy, Poland, and Austria, and I finally feel extremely safe from a defensive war against the Ottomans, and therefore, because I have almost uh, infinite opportunities to expand in this situation, like into the uh, Circassia, as well as a Georgia, the Mamluks going into the future, North Africa, um, a lot that could be done potentially uh, Italy, and... Uh, for that reason, we have some liberties I have because I just took the Crimea as a subject. Um, the economy is doing well. I have 33% uh, overextension, but yet we're not losing very much money. I have quite some money saved up, and that's with a plus to advisor because I'm actually trying to um, help stabilize my country but by uh, converting. As far as ideas, I've gone religious ideas, and we just took diplomatic ideas. I'm getting nearer and nearer to that deus fault. So that's it, and check in with you in a second. Alrighty, I've continued on about another 63 years, and you can see just how far we've come in the last 63 years. Uh, I have actually had, I think, two victories over the Ottomans in order to... We, I can now walk across the strait when I uh, declare on him. And uh, yeah, taking a lot of the Balkan side, you can see, as well as some of uh, the Anatolia. And I have actually been keeping his capital in Udurn so that I can just jump onto his capital to kind of demoralize him. But also right now he is transferring literally 100% into Constantinople. If I took that Constantinople, we would have more influence over Constantinople. But I don't have an available merchant right now as our merchants are doing work in Alexandria and the Crimea. Speaking of the Crimea, you can see that we have integrated the Crimea 
and I own a lot of the region. In fact, every significant, oh, apart from there, uh, province within the Crimean trade node. Aristocan is also our subject who I have fed just a little bit. He's also, also Orthodox, which is our religion, by the way. Uh, but you can see here I've expanded massively into North Africa and yeah, feeling really, really, really good about this game. So that's pretty impressive in my opinion. Uh, we still have really good diplomacy. I've actually abandoned Poland as I do intend to expand into this area. And I am going to be trying to actually diplo vassalize Wallachia as we close the gap between just how supremely powerful I am. But yeah, with that being said, we still have a lot of opportunities to expand. I plan to feed uh, Aristocan into uh, his kind of cultural group and uh, expand south here into the Horn of Africa, as well as west here into, the, um, into West Africa. And still, I've been a little bit lazy, guys, honestly, because I didn't want to deal with the aggressive expansion. Uh, I, I probably could have gone into Italy, but I didn't really want to deal with that. But nonetheless, I have actually smashed the Ottomans, and I feel like we could be doing more of the same, as I have plenty of favors with Austria, and Russia is rivaling him, and actually we, I'm able to call him in as well. So we're really well set up in the future to just take big chunks of his land. I also have the Deus Vault CB, which um, makes, uh, yeah, as long as we win the battles, it's it's fairly decisive, and I don't have to actually siege up every fort to be able to take big chunks of land. But yeah, our economy is doing extremely well here. You can see 20 per month, but that of, uh, that is because my forces are quite low. My manpower has been quite low. And therefore, my forces, I've been operating on sort of a small amount of forces, um, but our economy is doing really, really well. That is with advisors. I've had power projection for the last ever. I'm actually doing fairly badly in power projection um, because of how long the truce is with the Ottomans. Uh, however, yeah, extremely rich. I, I've built up like a lot of our uh, provinces. And uh, we've got a good navy up and running. Things are going really, really well. And if you would like to have an awesome game like this as Albania and you're not sure how to do it, stick around and I'll show you what should be your opening move. All right, guys, in this segment of the video, I'm going to be actually executing this, uh, the opening strategy myself, recorded live in front of you with no cuts or anything to show you, to demonstrate that it is in fact possible. Just quickly going to do some basic stuff with my merchants and uh, I just want to say really quickly guys that uh, there is varying degree within the strategies that I make of how much I feel like it is a huge success or not the video in fact there has been other videos that I've scrapped because I feel like uh, the strategy is not consistent enough and uh, what I will say about this Albanian nation and this video the strategy uh, it is very possible. It's very possible and, and very quite consistent. And uh, because uh, initially when I started uh, trying to record this, I actually thought Albania was incredibly hard in the current dynamic of the game. The main reason is because of the development uh, being so horrendously low with six. Uh, not only are they one province minor, but they're really weak. And with that in mind, I actually am really proud of myself for this video. And I really hope, hope this is well received and you guys enjoy this. It's pretty basic stuff, but you will find if you do it yourself, like I said, it's pretty consistent. And if you actually fail for some reason, just try again. You know, it's the early game. And uh, with that being said, it is certainly possible that you can fail, but it is actually not going to come down to horrendously bad luck, I would say. Actually, more your own sort of errors and inability to be a really proficient general. That is what's going to help you be really strong um, and successful in this run as being really, really good in uh, your little engagements and your battles and being prepared for what I'll get into uh, later. But with that being said here, I'm going to go ahead and begin going over our force limit. And speaking of our force limit, I'm actually going to be developing our land with our admin and our... I'll actually do one with military, but no more than that. So I spent all of our monarch points. And uh, the intention is to actually raise our force limit up, but also increase the, the quality of our loans. Because this strategy does risk basically breaking your bank. Um, thankfully, Skanderbeg is a complete badass with 656. So this opener is going to be extremely costly. 
But unlike other nations like Vilahia, for example, we actually are going to be given some time. We're going to be just fine because of uh, how much monarch points we're gaining here initially. Now, the first thing you should be worried about is Albania is just simply surviving. Within about two months, you can literally get attacked by the Ottomans and, for that matter, Venice as well. And your game is over, completely over. So that was my first thought process when I decided that you need enough diplomacy to dis deter people from attacking you. And in order to do that, I'm going to grab a raw marriage from Bosnia. I'm going to improve relations with Valachia. And I'm also going to improve relations with Genoa. And we're actually going to allow the first... No, we're not. I'm also going to accept demands of the Orthodox Salad. So notice in my uh, previous segment, uh, we did go Orthodox. And the main reason, well, it's just so much easier, guys. It's just so much easier. You could try to go Catholic, but you're on your own, man. Going Orthodox is easier for a few reasons. Um, we're going to be able to boost our stability because our opening move, our first initial war is going to be a no CB. At the moment, our religious unity is negative 100. And uh, it's going to make boosting your stability go from about 90 to about 180 in terms of cost, which we just can't afford. But moreover, now that we accepted and we became Orthodox, uh, you're going to see here that when this game registers and the first month ticks by from improving relations, just like that, we can be grabbing Valahia as an ally. So I'm going to pull back my uh, diplomat now. And that is really important, guys, that you do it as soon as humanly possible because uh, we cannot be attacked until the 11th of December. That is the s simply the earliest. In fact, he sent his emissary and asked us for an alliance. So boom, just like that. Now notice also you can rival Serbia. Uh, don't do that. Just don't do that. I don't know what else to say apart from don't do that. So we already have the ally of Valahia at least before it is even humanly possible to attack us. And I'm now going to begin improving relations with Bosnia. However, there's a few other things we're waiting for here. As I go up to 8 out of 6 of my force limit. And each month I'm going to actually develop. Nice, we're guaranteed by Serbia. Now he will actually guarantee you very often even if you rival him. And he rivals you in return. Notice that he's only got two rivals. If you rival him, he's very likely to rival you in return. Uh, the thing is, though, if he is your rival, he's less likely to honor that guarantee. Um, so, But regardless, we can see his attitude has actually changed. Very cool and important. And we just got a mission to improve relations with Serbia. The reward is uh, diplomatic reputation. So really cool. And uh, we're going to be taking that mission while we wait and build up our troops. So the other threat, of course, is Venice. Now that we're guaranteed by Serbia and we're allied by Valahia, I guarantee you that uh, the Ottomans will take easier pickings than us. They won't go in against us. In fact, I've seen them move up towards my province as though we were their first option and their first choice and then actually walk away when they realize the situation we're in. I'm going to go ahead and ally, uh, not ally, excuse me, Royal Marriage Serbia in order to help us obtain the 100 relations. But also, now that Genoa has made Trade League, we're going to join the Trade League. Boom. So that is my diplomatic solution here for the early game, guys. Um, you can, for some reason, Serbia sometimes doesn't guarantee you, I think. Although they do guarantee you with a tremendous amount of consistency. But right now you can see that we're guaranteed by Serbia, allied with Vlahia, and we have the Trade League of Genoa as, uh, defending us. So um, this will be enough to deter somebody from attacking you. Very good. Continue developing here. And we're now at 7 force limit, which is perfect. It's, it's going to have to do us. And I am looking out for um, actually being able to make Reguser a rival, uh, if it gives us the option. Sometimes it seems to give you the option, other times it doesn't. But if we do rival him, it's actually going to, we could have probably already allied Bosnia as well, which is something we're going to be shooting for here. Um, we, allying Serbia is possible when you get over 100 relations, he can flip friendly, and you can ally him even though you're allying his rival Valahia. But... 
Uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And we're soon ready to make our first move, which shouldn't be a surprise to many of you. Uh, that first move is going to be a no CB on Byzantium. So let's go ahead and uh, speed the game along here. I am going to develop our uh, with diplomatic points one more time in an effort to try to improve our quality of loanage. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, declare on him when we're one over our force limit here. And one thing you really need to make note of, guys, this is essentially my Serbian and Valachian opening move recycled. Byzantium has naval superiority, so it is incredibly important that you actually no CB him before the Ottomans become too powerful, i.e. they win their first war, basically, uh, to where the Byzantium is no longer a valid rival. Because when we no CB him, By the way, he's stronger than us, but of course we have the god tier general Skanderbeg, which is going to make all the difference in the world. We're going to be able to get military access through the Ottomans, even though he's hostile towards us. Because, of course, we're attacking his rival. So the same old opening move here, which is all that much more satisfying when playing uh, one province minor, in my opinion. Now, your objective in mind, by the way, we're over our diplomatic relations because we lost relation to any trade league. It is what it is. It's only one point. So there you go. What you should have in mind here, guys, he has superior numbers and he's actually wealthy enough, unlike you, to build up higher and higher. By the way, I'm going to be taking war taxes here, even though it hardly does anything. Literally, you can lose the game here, guys, by going bankrupt because your loans are so garbage. So... There you go, we're going to be taking that. Your focus should be on what just happened there, which is taking out the Athenian troops, make the same move I did, down to Yanya, and then cross over here. Now we're going to actually sneak back towards our capital, because he has 8k himself, and he's going to walk onto our capital, where we're going to be able to stack wipe him as well, if we're lucky, due to being in mountains. If not, he's going to retreat probably, well, it doesn't matter where he retreats, we should be able to stack wipe him if we catch up. Oh, okay. Alrighty. He didn't quite get stack wiped there, but that's okay. Now, I am actually going to consolidate my forces, guys, down to seven there. Uh, and we're chasing him down. We should get the stack wipe here. Notice I am improving with Bosnia as we fight this war, and I should actually improve with Serbia as well. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, it's a hard choice between developing and boosting stability. Um... We're going to have to just be content with the loan of five ducats, which is really bad. Really bad, because keep in mind, defeating this guy here is going to require us to have nine units um, to actually siege down Constantinople. So he's actually recruited 2k here as we've been walking around. Oh, you're kidding me. Bad luck right off the bat. So priority, if we sit on Athens there, he'll cancel his recruitment. And then we can do the same thing here in a cheer. He'll cancel that. We can go in and stack wipe here. Now, he usually has his maintenance off. So thankfully the garrison in, in uh, Moria is not very high. And now we're going to go ahead and siege up a cheer. And that's pretty much it, guys. Like, the rest is self-explanatory. So I'm not going to be that chatty. I'm going to talk actually about my game. While I'm going to begin by sieging down uh, Athens. And uh, I am keeping my force limit as low as possible here while we do this. For obvious reasons. Economic reasons. Uh, although we are going to have to go up to 9. There's one other thing I recommend you do. Now that you've taken a cheer. Uh, and that's move a unit into the Ottoman lands. Oopsie daisies. We're getting blocked there at the strait. So that he cannot cancel military access. So that is going to be one little cheeky move that we do. And uh, there we go. So there's, uh, it's a pretty hard decision, guys. Obviously, you want to actually vassalize Byzantium. There's some incentive there to vassalize him because you want to have the core, you know. But there's actually no way to defeat the Ottomans early. And for that reason, considering they would take a Diplo slot... 
Um, I actually chose to just fully annex Byzantium in my playthrough. You also have the issue where Venice or Constant or the Ottomans, excuse me, can declare on Byzantium. And then in that case, you risk having them, we just got warned by the Ottomans, that's fine, um, jo them attacking you when you vassalize Byzantium. In my opinion, the play is to just be conservative and just fully annex um, Byzantium and just be content that although you don't get the reconquest, what you do do is you prevent the Ottomans from taking the capital, which means they're going to be a weaker version of themselves. And don't underestimate how much weaker they will be, by the way, guys, because they actually don't get the cultural union as they don't become empire rank. They need 1,000 development to become empire rank. So it's going to take a long time, like 100 plus years, before they will ever get the cultural union. Uh, so it, it definitely is a big headache for them. And you're always looking at the war with Ottomans from a defensive point of view. In my case, it took probably about 100 years or so before I uh, actually won over on the Ottomans. But no, no, that's not true. Excuse me, I won a defensive war against the Ottomans. I actually thought the game was over when he attacked me, uh, but I kept trying. And speaking of defensive wars, that's what I really mean when I'm talking about your kind of military prowess. Uh, you, you can, this opener, it works. As you can see, it works. But you can actually lose the game. We can't afford anything economic here, guys. So increasing influence. Uh, you can actually lose the game due to being attacked by Venice or something like that. I actually did find myself in multiple defensive wars where the AI thought they were strong enough to declare on me, and I actually won those wars. So Venice, for instance, will attack you. Um, given some time, he might just, if he's sitting around kind of stagnating, he might just attack you despite allying Serbia or Bosnia. But what you will find most likely is especially if you can attach their units you can use the mountain terrain to just kick his ass basically i don't know how else to say that um that's the most uh straightforward way of saying that in fact i literally so we've completed our mission here with some deploy reputation and i'm going to go for the uh, prestige here which gives us a 100 admin reward very much desired but that reputation will hopefully allow us to uh go into the next phase of diplomacy which is kind of upgrading your allies um what i was going to say is in my game i made this move and i felt really far behind you know in terms of uh, monarch points and i just sat around actually not doing anything however oopsie i want to sit here yeah cool to prevent the ottomans from cancelling military access i did continue to expand but they were simply through defensive wars so i fought a defensive war against the venice venetians and i actually defeated him taking some land um oh i i did actually declare on ragusa when ragusa um at some point the ottomans did not back up ragusa so keep that in mind guys because if you can take out a one province minor like that you can very often um take his money you know he might have a hundred plus ducats just sitting around so very much are worth it in every regard um so the next move guys once we uh, actually fully annex we're taking our sweet sweet time here as you can see with byzantium because i was waiting as long as possible delaying to go up to this nine stack which is uh, really going to begin breaking our bank uh, however when we annex the byzantium we're going to be able to take some of his money and that's going to allow us to pay off some of our loans but what you also have to keep in mind is your loans are going to be much greater than five once you have expanded so what you want to do is obviously uh even if you were at your maximum loan limit you could debase your currency pay off some loans take a loan pay off more loans etc so you'll end up with my prediction is two 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 loans basically the really bad side is the inflation, but it's enough to manage here initially in the early game. So we're going to go up to force uh, 9, which is 2 over. And I guess it's your choice. Probably within this amount of time, you could have increased your force limit, guys, by jamming development. So that's your choice. Unfortunately, it's fairly expensive on the mountains. 
But if you think that's more economical, uh, go ahead and do that so that at this stage we would be won over. Um, but we're going to go ahead and not worry about the Ottomans cancelling military access any longer. In fact, oh gosh, that's a problem. That little in, in, injured unit, I'm stuttering, uh, is going to take a long time to recover, guys. I'm actually going to recruit another unit and then uh, delete this guy here. So, painful stuff. Really painful stuff. Alrighty. And we officially don't mind if the Ottomans cancel the military axis. So, we're going to sit on this point, losing 1.4, which is huge for us uh, each month. Really painful stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and improve relations with Hungary, see if we can grab him with some luck. And uh, I will actually cancel the Ottomans military axis so that we're now not over our Diplo relations. And uh, yeah, that's essentially it here, guys. So we're just going to chill with this. So, until we take Constantinople and then uh, move on with our life. So, the next thing you should be worried about, guys, is opportunities to expand. And this is the obvious region. However, at the moment, we're depending on them as allies. In fact, keep in mind that Genoa will not back you up because when you expand, you will leave the Trade League. And he's got no real incentive as a Catholic to like you. So, uh... The name of the game for sure is diplomacy while you're licking your wounds. You don't want to be attacked by Venice if you can help it. And uh, for that reason, we are going to depend on these guys for alliances still. Uh, we are uh, warned by the Ottomans, so there's no reason trying to go into Serbia or anything like that. Uh, you can't go into Bosnia. However, um, Ragusa is the obvious choice. The Ottomans can f fairly easily get their war exhaustion high enough to where you can go into Ragusa. And it's going to enable you to go into Bosnia in the future without um, worrying about the warning. As far as Serbia, the method that I used is I uh, attacked him. I had prepped it so I was ready to attack him. And I attacked him as soon as the Ottomans did. And uh, basically undermound him. I undermoundified -mound him. I under, undermid him. <laughs> I did something to him, guys, and just ninjaed all of Serbia. So with that in mind, we're going to have one Diplo slot free, and we're really worried about diplomacy. In my case, uh, I basically slowly began to replace these guys with Italians. And, uh, like, for example, Milan. Now, Milan will help you against Venice, guys, you very often. So very much consider when you're looking at the Italians to ally... Italian nations, because they're fairly close, you can usually get them, um, but nations that will help you against Venice. Speaking of which, um, obviously you want Hungary. Hungary is really the golden boy. He's strong enough to where, honestly, if you get him as an ally, it's pretty much going to deter the Ottomans indefinitely. Pretty much. Uh, because, like I said, they're going to be a weaker version of the Ottomans. They're going to spend a lot of time just expanding, doing stuff, and not having the courage to attack you if Hungary is your ally. But moreover, Hungary is usually rivaling Venice, so therefore you can actually ravage Venice with Hungary, and you can even often promise him land and give him some Italian land, and therefore gain enough favors to call him in into offensive war because of the different religion, even if he... Uh, is not rivaling the Ottomans, who very often won't like him. Now, I was in the perfect situation, the sweet spot, which is what I just described in terms of diplomacy, and Hungary did actually get PU'd in my game by Austria. So at th that was when the Ottomans attacked me, and I actually felt like I was going to lose the game. Uh, so that's unfortunate if that happens. Oh, <laughs> the Ottomans declared on Byzantium. Now, guys, if they do declare on Byzantium, very often, it's not the end of the world as long as you've got the occupation. Uh, and what you can actually do very often is bait them in to... Uh, they try to ninja the siege. Um, so you can kind of... Let me see if I can de demonstrate this. Well, we don't have access. You can kind of walk away with all but one troop. Um, or if you... No, I'm worried about the siege progress. What, what I'm trying to say is you can begin to walk away and they quickly are like, go, 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 walk in. And then you sit back on it and then you can actually bait them into siege the down the province for you and delete some of your units so it can help out your economy if they declare it however this obviously destroys any hope or opportunity to um vassalize them 
and uh, like I said, you shouldn't be vassalizing them anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, we'll probably be, oh, we got a deploy rep advisor, that's cool, and uh, we're just chilling on the capital, slowly but surely, as we've got call for peace. Aha, we finally did it. Hurrah! So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to delete this fort in the south of Greece, and I'm going to turn this fort off in Constantinople. And what I actually recommend you guys do is take out loans, repay all loans, until you have nothing but... Well, my prediction was way wrong. Three loans. Three loans instead of two. Um, guys, you are simply too small to deal with revolts, and I'm going to increase uh, autonomy in every province. Uh, it is just the most, it's the best thing to do in my opinion, it's really painful, but it is what it is. And we've now left the Genoan Trade League. At this point, we should be able to ally Bosnia, because we improve relations with him, and given some time... You might be able to ally Serbia if they flip, if you manage to flip them friendly. And you're pretty much in the typical circumstance here, guys. Keep in mind our overextension is really bad and we've got some aggressive expansion, making us a real, people don't want to ally us. But given some time, you should be able to build allies. Very typical and reminiscent of a Byzantium kind of game in this situation. The rest is up to you. I'm going to turn my army maintenance down and uh, going to go make sure we're not over our force limit. So we're only losing a small amount of money now, but uh, we might end up taking another loan. But that is with a tremendous amount of overextension, guys. Once you core these up, you make this your trading port with diplomatic points and your economy is going to boost significantly as you are actually collecting Constantinople. That's the opening move, guys. The rest is up to you. Like I said, try to swap out these guys with Italians or something. To Venice should be your focus. And then expand into these guys once your truce is up. Uh, in my case, obviously, I, I took Crete from Venice. And that allowed me to CB against the Mamelukes. I attacked the Mamelukes when they were getting ravaged by the Ottomans. And I managed to block the Ottomans off. And that made me a prosperity town into the future. I eventually got strong enough to where... Um, when Venice was embroiled in war and the Mamluks were embroiled in war, I managed to just go into Cyprus in the nights. And uh, I actually took this land here in a defensive battle against the Ottomans when he attacked me. And when I lost Hungary as a ally, believe it or not, I bet him. At the time I had, I think, Florence, Milan, and Savoy as allies. I lost Hungary and I switched him out for Georgia as I was afraid the Ottomans would attack. They did attack. And basically, we had just brutal... I, I took heaps of diplomatic relations to get access. I just had brutal, like, grueling engagements in the mountains where we actually... I won every engagement, but it was kind of the circumstance where you're winning, but you kind of feel like you're losing because you're just going to get overwhelmed. While Georgia actually just sieged him from behind. And because he didn't actually get the war goal, and because we had some... Um, forts we uh, were winning the battles i had some war score his enthusiasm lowered and that's why i actually took land out here in this region because i couldn't take one here because i didn't have any forts occupied in the baltic region uh, but i did decide if i took land here that would allow me to bridge out into this region and uh, the method that i did is i actually took land that janda owned to release him as a subject and um that way i could deal with the sunni provinces that early and uh, yeah, subject was a good way to go. And then I integrated him once I had religious ideas. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have the best success. And this is the conclusion to my Albanian video, the opening move. Peace out, guys. I'll see you next time.